Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.3 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to tutorial 10, Harm. Today we're going to learn all about the AGM-88C Harm Missile. That stands for High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile. This is a missile used for suppression of enemy air defences. It can be fired against emitting surface-to-air missile system radars, both search and track radars, and um, he has a maximum range of 40 nautical miles at 40,000 feet. Uh, range will vary, however, given the altitude at which you launch and the speed that you're flying at. Uh, two of the main uh, modes of employment have now been implemented. Uh, that is HAS, which is harm as a sensor, and POS, or position mode. Uh, HAS is a target of opportunity, primarily self-defense mode, where you simply turn on the seeker head of the missile, uh, designate a target and fire. Uh, no ranging information is provided, so you need to guesstimate whether you're in range or not. Pause mode, position mode, uh, is where you have a pre-planned attack. Basically, at the current time, it needs to be sensor point of interest in the form of a steer point. So you would have a steer point that is co-located with a known uh, radar site, and the missile will fly towards that. Uh, and in some of the sub-modes, you can even loft the missile for greater range, and it will become active at a set distance from that steer point, and then engage the, the site. Um... There's no particular setup of this missile before launch, so I'm going to get the aircraft in the air and uh, demonstrate its use against an SA-2 site in all of the modes that are currently implemented. Uh, one major mode that is not implemented today is the HAD, or the Harm Attack Display, because this requires the HTS, which is the Harm Targeting System Pod, uh, and that's not implemented in the sim yet. And that's actually quite a unique way of employing the Harm. That's something that only the F-16 is capable of doing, making it a very effective seed or wild weasel platform. Today you can see that I have four Harm missiles loaded on the jet. That is the maximum number you can carry. They can be carried on pylons 7, 6, four or three. Uh, so that makes it quite a quite a nice suppression of enemy air defences load out there. Okay, I'll get the aircraft in the air and I'll see you on the way to the target. Okay, you join me again in the cockpit of the F-16. We're currently 29 nautical miles inbound waypoint one, steer point one in fact, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go over some useful information before we actually begin setting up the missile and making our attack. If we centre down on the HSD right now, uh, you can see that um, some sites that we have information for before missions start are loaded into the DTC and appear on our HSD. Uh, you can't really see it here because the waypoint is co-located, but there is in fact a number 2 here uh, and the yellow threat circle denoting an SA-2 site at this location. Um, this is not live information, however. Only sites that we're aware of before mission start are present, and even after we destroy this site, uh, it will continue to appear in the HSD. More useful, in fact, is, of course, the radar warning receiver, which shows us live information about radars which are illuminating us. Currently, the search radar from the SA-2 uh, is illuminating us, and it's in the inner ring. So that's uh, useful information, uh, and we'll use that to actually guide ourselves in. Uh, next thing to be aware of is the way that... Um, radar types are preloaded into the harm. Uh, let's go air to ground, list, press uh, zero for miscellaneous, and then zero again for harm. Um, the harm has three tables of threat types loaded into it. Tables one, two, and three. We can see them here by using the rocker. Uh, and we can dauber up and down through each of the five threat types that's in each table. These codes are documented in the manual, uh, and most of the standard you kind of Russian and Soviet radar types that you're going to come up against are in the standard tables. However, there will be circumstances where you're going to attack something a little unusual, say something like a um, rapier missile system, which is not in any of the standard tables, you'll need to look at the manual, figure out what the code is, and then choose one of these uh, threat types to reprogram. Luckily for us, we're attacking an SA-2 site today, which is pretty standard, and is in the normal table 3, so we don't need to do anything. But if you have to change your codes, this is how it's done. If I hit return now, 
Um, we're already in air to ground mode. Let's go master arm on, and we're going to get the weapon set up. On the left multifunction display, I'm going to bring up the weapon page, because the weapon page is how we control the harm. Uh, and then over here on the right-hand side, let's go over how the weapon is displayed on the store's management system. As always, we have air to ground mode or gun mode on this first push button. We want to make sure we're in air to ground mode. Inventory displays what's hanging on the aircraft. Uh, I've got a centerline fuel tank. I've got harms on the inner and harms on the middle pylons. Nothing on the outer pylons. And on the wingtips, I have the ACMI pod and the captive sidewinder. And I also have a full gun loadout. And we can go back to the standard SMS page. We have four times AGM 88C and they're ready. We're going to power them on. Uh, and we also have confirmation here that they are present on stations 3, 4, 6, and 7. Once the harm is powered on, the weapons page becomes live, uh, and you can control the various modes of the harm from here. Um, has mode is the default, uh, harm as sensor, and like I said before, this is a sort of self-defense mode. I'm going to demonstrate this mode last. First, we're going to go has, and then switch to position mode. DL mode is not implemented yet. So we're going to go pause, and we're now in a position mode, which is a type of pre-planned attack. We can choose the table that we're currently using, and the contents of the table is displayed down the left-hand side. So here we've got like an SA-10, SA-11, and various other radar types with that. I know that my SA-2 is in table 3, and I want to make sure that I select 2, because we're intending to attack an SA-2. Uh, position mode has three sub-modes. Uh, these are pre-briefed mode, Equations of Motion mode, and Range Unknown mode. Each of these, they kind of operate in a very, very similar fashion, but they each have different strengths and weaknesses. Pre-briefed mode is, I would say, the standard mode when you are pretty confident about the location information you have for the site. So in pre-briefed mode, the missile will be lofted. You'll get guidance on the HUD on how to best loft the missile. You get best range in pre-briefed mode because of that. Uh, you have to be flying directly towards the site, and at 15 nautical miles from the steer point, the seeker on the harm will go active, and it will make a 120 degree search for the, the uh, SAM type that you've selected, in this case SA-2. On the main part of the screen here, uh, we have the launch status divider line, this green line. Everything below the line is the plan, and everything above the line is missiles in flight and their progress. I can press nose wheel steering to toggle which station I'm using, so we're currently on three. We can go to seven, four, six, and three. And note that the information is always displayed above the particular pylon in question. So that's pre-briefed mode. If I switch to equations of motion, equations of motion is very similar. However, the seeker will only activate at five nautical miles and in a 40 degree tight search. And so of course your steer point has to be much more accurately positioned. You also loft the missile in this mode, but the main benefit is that you can do a high off bore sight attack with EOM. You do not need to be facing the site, and in fact, it can do a, a 180 degree shot. The site can be behind you. Uh, of course, this means that the range of the missile will be greatly degraded in this mode, but very useful if you're outbound from a target, it suddenly lights you up. Um, you have the steer point, and you need to launch quick as possible. And finally, range unknown. This is the least effective mode, range-wise, you'll get the least range out of it. Uh, it does not loft the missile, it just fires it in whichever configuration you're currently in. The seeker goes live at 20 nautical miles, and so your steer point does not need to be as accurately positioned, and it does a 120 degree angle search. I'm going to demonstrate each of these modes in turn. So first we're going to do pre-briefed, and below the line we can see here, threat type is SA2, and steer point is number 1. And then we have the time until the missile goes active, 1 minute 31 seconds presently. So, let's uh, bring our view up to the HUD, and I'll go over the symbology on the HUD right now. Flashing box means that we are currently in range to fire the missile. This box will be solid when you're not in range. Uh, we've got a range scale down the right-hand side. This is the range to the steer point, but of course in most cases your steer point should be uh, accurately positioned, so that this is pretty much correct. We can see just now that uh, we're about 31 miles, in fact that's confirmed here, 
uh, heading 90, 31 miles to the target. Uh, this is the angle at which we're intending to loft the missile, the best angle. So angle 26 degrees, and then we have confirmation of the altitude that the launch will happen at approximately. So that's 30,700 feet is the altitude we intend to be at at the time we let go of the missile. In the middle here, we have the azimuth steering line in order so we can orient ourselves as best as possible with the steer point. We have the minimum lofting angle. We have the best lofting angle here, and we have the maximum lofting angle. These are compressed, by the way. Uh, so, you know, the, this uh, best lofting angle is at 26 degrees. So as we pull up, you'll see that these marks don't move very fast. And we want to line them up with a flight path marker before launch. Okay, so let's uh, let's get ready to go. I'm gonna disengage active pause. I'm gonna go after burner. And I'm gonna fly towards the target. And as we're in range, I'm gonna start pulling up. I wanna do it gently so we don't lose too much speed. That's about right. Magnum. And I'm gonna bring the nose back down again. And I'm going to continue... Oh, I went a little bit too much there. Uh, I'm going to continue my flight inbound because I want the radar to go active so the harm is, then has something to seek against. Note that these missiles are very big and very heavy, and so you're going to be quite... Oh, there we go. We're locked up by the SA-2 now. That's good. I'm going to have to use quite a bit of trim right to counteract the, the missing weight there. Uh, I'm going to go slightly off, um, but not completely off target because I do want that... SA-2 to continue to track me, so the harm has something to seek against. And let me pause for one moment, so I can show you what the weapons page looks like now. You'll notice for Pylon 3, the information is now above the line. This is the missile in flight, 44 seconds until active, travelling towards steer point 1, and it's going to look for SA-2 radars. So we need to make sure that tracking radar stays on. Let's unpause. Problem is, of course, we may well get fired upon in that time, but uh, if we knock out the tracking radar, the missile will be defeated, effectively. Uh, 24 miles out. I'm actually I'm going to level out about here, because I feel fairly safe doing that. Okay, 20 seconds until active. 22 miles to steer point one. 10 seconds. We've been launched on. And almost immediately, the launch warning went away. Now, why would that be? Why would that be? Let's look at the RWR. And you can see SA-2 site is now gone. Only the search radar is still looking for us. And also notice that on station three, the information has disappeared we have effectively executed that target. Well done, us. Okay, so I'm going to repeat now in equation of motion mode. I'm going to select search radar because we're going to knock out the search radar at that site as well. And uh, for this mode, we can loft the missile, um, but we don't have to. And we also don't have to be facing the target either. Notice that we already have a flashing box and we're already shown to be in range. So let's go ahead and fire the missile now. Magnum. Watch... Oh, I'm going to have to trim again. Watch the missile make that, that turn. It's actually lofting a little bit, and it's making quite a serious turn there off to the left, because it knows where that missile site is. It's going to go live at 5 nautical miles and do a 40-degree search. Luckily, I know that my steer point is very accurate, uh, and so it will hit that radar. Uh, I'm going to... Just pop on, oops, pop on the autopilot right now. And let's watch the missile. And it's already tracking. You can see it's angled down quite, uh, quite aggressively. And we're probably going to get a top hit on that search radar. That's looking pretty good. Boom, search radar is gone. Okay, I'm going to reset and then I will demonstrate range unknown modes and harm as a sensor mode. 
Okay, so we're back in the jet. I've respawned that SA2 site, uh, and once again we're in position mode, table 3, SA2 selected, and now we're in range unknown mode. Now in range unknown mode we don't get the countdowns uh, and, and kind of estimates of when we go active and so on. Uh, all we get is uh, the fact we're looking for an SA2 site at steer point 1. Now that missile is going to go active at 20 nautical miles and uh, it's going to do a 120 degree search. We're also not lofting, so if we look back up at the HUD here, we have a steering line but no loft lines. Uh, we don't have any information about the angle and altitude at launch. We do have a standard uh, launch, um, launch range indication here, maximum minimum ranges. We are currently in range and the box is flashing. So let's uh, come out of active pause. Magnum, and I'm going to turn off angle just a little bit to give us a bit more time to react before that sight shoots us down. <laughs> so I'm going to just do a kind of 45 degrees off angle there to give us some more time. Currently 29 miles away from the SA-2 site at 30,000 feet. Okay, I'm going to roll out about here, because I do still want the sights to go active. And actually, if I take a little look at my HSD... Yeah, in fact, I'm going to want to turn back in for a bit, because I want to make sure I get inside its uh, threat range before the missile starts seeking. There we go. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Just going to check on the missile in the F6 view. Missile is inbound. It looks like it's seeking. Yep, it is. It's, it's making a turn and it's descending. So I think there's a good chance that it has seen the emitter. Uh, I think at this off angle, we shouldn't be at too much risk ourselves of being shot down. But I think there's a good chance we're going to destroy that radar. We've just been launched on. And in fact, there you go. You can see a missile streaking in the air towards us. But, uh, I don't know, guys. I think, uh, I think we're going to get him first. And note the lack of a tone. Um, and I think when that happens, the SA-2 missile just self-destructs. So we are now no longer in any risk. So that was pretty effective. Uh, that was the last of the position modes range unknown. Okay, and now you join me for the final mode in which we can use the harm, HAS, or harm as sensor. This is a nice uh, self-protection mode. We can launch against anything that the harm sensor can see itself directly, uh, but we don't get any range information, so we need to know that we're in range. So, uh, yeah, with HAS mode selected, we have this view. This is actually just the bore sight of the missile itself. We're just using the missile's own sensor. The cross here is where the... Uh, harm missile is pointed. This is left, right. It can see slightly up, but of course it's optimized to look down. Uh, and as before, we have tables. So table three is the one that includes the SA-2. These radar types down the left are what are being searched for. Uh, the green box across the top are the types that have been detected so far. In this case, we have a search radar. And this counter here is the time to complete the search. Um, for a search like this, it's taking around about 40-something seconds to do a complete scan. We can actually reduce the width of the scan. I'm just doing a center scan now, and it's much faster. We also have the option to click search and disable radar types that we know we're not going to come up against. And that will also increase the, uh, the speed of the scan. You can see now it's down to just a few seconds, uh, and we've got a search radar showing up there. UFC, once again, would display the harm tables. And down here we have the pylons that currently have harm missiles, with nose wheel steering allowing us to cycle through them. DMS down will make this display sensor of interest. And then we can use the cursor to highlight a particular radar type and TMS forward to select it. There's a prefix of an A or a T if the radar is active or it's tracking. If it's tracking, you've probably been fired on. So, I've now done TMS forward. We now get a view which allows us to line up the missile. So if I come out of active pause right now, I can maneuver the aircraft to put that close to the center of the missile's view, and then push pickle. And the missile's away. And we have no further information. That missile is now just going to track on its own, 
and it should reach that particular missile site. Uh, and we've got no further information on it whatsoever. Our only indication that it has in fact impacted the target will be the fact that that particular radar no longer emits. And that's the SA-2 just locked us up there. So I'm going to break off very quickly. But that completes the demonstration of all the different modes of the harm. Uh, I hope that everybody found that useful. Uh, as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you all next time.